Today I'm going to show you how you can create a stylized pirate ship like the one you see right now using Blender and Substance Painter. As always we begin by adding a default cube into a scene and then scale it up to 5 times the size by simply pressing S and then 5 on the keyboard. Then we can press S and Y to scale it in the Y axis and just make it longer. Now we want to add some loop cuts and for that we're going to press Ctrl R and then we can set the number of loop cuts with the mouse wheel or by typing the number on the keyboard. Then we're going to scale it down in the C axis a bit and then in the edit mode we're going to activate the proportional editing by pressing O on the keyboard and we pull up the front and the back of the ship a little bit. Then we add some horizontal loop cuts so we can form the ship. After that we're gonna select the bottom faces and scale them down in the x-axis to get the round shape of a ship. In the front of the ship we select the row faces, scale them in the x-axis and pull them more to the front. Now we select those 5 faces on the top of the ship and extrude them to the top. And we do the exact same on the front. Before we can do the next step we gotta press Ctrl A and apply the rotation and the scale. When we did that we can select the top faces, press I to insert them and then extrude them down. Now we got a nice base shape of the ship and we can begin to add some details. First let's make some stamps, so for that you just add in a cylinder, make it longer and place them on the ship. Now let's get to the railing, for that we just add a cylinder, reduce the poly count and extrude it to get a kind of interesting shape. Then we take that thing and place it on the edges of the ship, on the front and the back. So just add a mirror modifier and duplicate it a bunch of times. Then we just gotta make a cube, make it smaller and scale it down in the c-axis. Then we gotta put it on top of these pillars we just made and extrude it on both sides and follow the path of the railing. I used the auto mirror add-on which made the whole thing a lot easier but you can do it without if you want. At the ends of the railing we select the last face, extrude it and scale it down to get that bevel effect. To make the captain's cabin we select those faces in the back and press extrude along normals. Then to get a clean edge on the ship we hold the alt key and select the whole row on top of the ship. Then we extrude that and extrude it again to make it stand out a bit. For the stairs we again just add a cube, scale it up in the y axis and scale it down in the c axis and then just put them on top of each other like you see right here. And because we want those stairs on both sides we just add a mirror modifier to them. For the front of the ship we duplicate those stairs but of course we gotta delete some steps to make it shorter. I actually forgot the part of railing where the steering wheel will be so we just add that now. Now that we got that, it's time for some cannons, but first we gotta do the holes of course, where the cannons will be. So just add a cube, make it really long and duplicate and place it where they should be. When you're happy with the position of the cubes, just shift select all of them and last the ship and press ctrl minus to cut them out of the ship. The modeling of the cannons is pretty straightforward, so we just add a cylinder, uh, extrude it out to the shape of a cannon. Then we add a cube and add the auto mirror add-on to it. And we extrude that face to get the base of the cannon. Finally we add 4 cylinders to make the wheels of the cannon. And now we got a cannon, so just join all the objects and place them at the holes we just made. For the steering wheel we again use a cylinder and make it a bit longer. Then we add a torus and to make it thinner we go into the edit mode, select all and press alt s. And then we add some more cylinders and rotate them around the torus to make the steering wheel. In the middle of the wheel we add another cylinder and we extrude it to connect it to the base. Then just join all the objects and place it on the back of the ship. Now I want to add some arches and for that I add a cube, extrude it and at the top I use the spin tool to make this arch form. Then we gotta adjust the size of this arch so it perfectly fits in that gap. And when we did that we can duplicate it so there's three in a row. On the edges of the ship we're gonna add some bars, so again just add a cube, make it longer and duplicate it and just put it on the edges. Now I want some horizontal bars on the side of the ship. For that I'm gonna add a plane and I place it where I want the bar to start. Then we go into the modifiers and we add a shrink grip modifier. 
As a target, we're gonna select the ship. And what this does is that it makes the plane wrap around the model that we targeted. So we just select an edge of the plane and extrude it all the way to the front of the ship. When that's done, we gotta add a solidify modifier to give it some depth. Now let's give the captain's cabin some windows. And for that, we add a cube, extrude it and add some loop cuts. Then we're gonna select the top face and with the proportional editing we're gonna scale it down to make it round. Now just duplicate it and add some windows where you want them. And then just like before we're gonna press Ctrl- on the numpad to cut out the windows of the ship model. Then we just do the exact same thing for the door of the cabin at the front. And then I decided to make another bar but for that I didn't use the shrink wrap modifier but I just extruded it out of the ship. Now we finally get to the sails. So we just duplicate the stem and rotate them by 90 degrees and place them on the stem. For the front and the back one I use two and in the middle one there are three. For the sails I created a plane, uh, subdivided it a bunch of times and then used the proportional editing to get the shape of a sail. Now just attach those sails to the wooden bars we just made and with that we got some sails. But these sails wouldn't work without ropes. And for that I added a path uh, with a mirror modifier and I just attached them to the end of the wood. Now we gotta duplicate these ropes and adjust them. I'm gonna speed up this part because it takes a pretty long time but in my opinion it's absolutely worth it. When you're done with that you can add a crow's nest by extruding the stem and scaling it and then I use the railing just like before. On the top of that crow's nest we can add a flag and by proportional editing it we can make it look like it's waving in the wind. And for the last details of the modeling I created a barrel and a crate and I duplicated that a few times and placed it all around the ship which just adds so much to the ship. And with that we have just completed the modeling part and the next step is the unwrapping. But before we do that, we are first gonna create a new collection and then press A and duplicate all the models and then press M to move them in the new collection. Then we're gonna disable all the other collections so we don't see them anymore. And then we're gonna press A again and select all of the models in the new collection and we're gonna convert them to mesh. Now all of the ropes are meshes and not curves and all the modifiers are applied. And then for one last time we're gonna press A, select all the models and then Ctrl J to join them. Now we got one single object and we can start the unwrapping. For that we're gonna go into the edit mode and press select and then select sharp edges. Now that we got those selected we're gonna press Ctrl E and then mark seam. Those seams will be crucial to the unwrapping. However, I later realized that the ropes kind of mess up the unwrap and so what we're gonna do is select at least one face of every rope <clears throat> and then press Ctrl L to select all the whole ropes and then press P and selection to make them a separate object. Now we can hide those ropes and go into the edit mode of the ship. Then we're gonna select all the vertices and press U and then unwrap. Now our model is unwrapped but there's still one thing we gotta do before we can go into Substance Painter which is uh, select all the vertices which should have the plank material and give it a new material and call it planks. And we're gonna do that with every material. So we're gonna create a wood material, a sail material, a metal material and a glass material. And for all of these materials, just select all the faces that should have that material and click Assign. You can give those a color, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna retexture it in Substance Painter. And when that is done, we can finally export it as an FBX and import it into Substance Painter. But before we're gonna do that, we're gonna create an alpha texture for the planks. I use Adobe Illustrator, but you can use whichever software you like. So just add some white stripes on a dark canvas, but be careful, don't rotate those stripes or something else, because it's got to be seamless to work. When we're finished, we can just export it as a JPEG and import it into Substance Painter. So now we're in Substance Painter and we got our ship loaded in and we also imported the text that we just made. And the first thing we're gonna do is bake the textures. So just press that little bake button and in that window we set the output size to 2048 and we slightly increase the slider 
and that the anti-aliasing we're gonna select the subsampling 2 times 2 and then just hit the bake selected textures button. When that's finished we're gonna select the planks material on the top right and then add a new fill layer. On the left we're only gonna activate the color and the roughness and we set the color to a like darkish brown and the roughness to like 0.8. Then we're gonna create another fill layer and we're gonna add a black mask and right click it and also add a fill layer. Then we're gonna search for the plank texture we just made in the bottom window and we're gonna drag and drop it onto the window on the left. This will look weird at first because we gotta increase the scale and adjust the rotation. When we did that we can give it a dark color like almost black and also decrease the height a bit to give it some depth. Then we're gonna create another fill layer with a dark brown color and we again add a black mask and a fill layer but this time we're gonna search for a grunge map which kinda looks like wood and again drag and drop it onto the window on the left. And again we're gonna create another fill layer this time with an even darker brown color and we're again giving it a black mask but this time we add a generator. Then in the window on the left we're gonna select a dirt generator. This modifier fills our ridges with dirt. And then one last time for the planks, we're gonna add another fill layer. We don't give it any color and we don't add a black mask, but we right click it and give it a filter. And we're gonna select the baked stylus lighting. This looks weird at first, but we gotta set it to soft lighting instead of normal and slightly decrease the opacity. Now we're gonna do pretty much the same stuff for all the materials, so I'm speeding this up. So just give it a color, add some grunge, maybe add a curvature generator to highlight the edges, and that's it. When you're happy with your result, you can export the textures and then open up Blender again. Now, if you haven't already, I'd highly recommend you install the Node Wrangler add-on. If we have installed this, we can just go into the shading tab Click the principal BSDF and then press Ctrl Shift T. This will open up the explorer and you can select the textures that you want to import. And Blender will automatically do it for you. Do that process with all of the materials and then we are finished. Thank you so much for sticking around till the very end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and leave some feedback in the comments. And I wish you good luck in your 3D journey.